Mm -mm -mm. What's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all doing well today, or whatever time you're watching this video. How you doing, all right? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video. We're going to be talking about a few things. Firstly, some current Chelsea players, some youth, a returning injured player. Wait, a player returning from injury, some youth. Another quick update on Porto left back Alex Tellez, who has been heavily linked with Chelsea of late. And I want to talk about Jaden Sancho again. It's been a while, but stuff's been happening. There's been reports from Germany. Apparently, Manchester United are now a heavy favourite to sign the young England international. And then people are saying, no, 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 dude is going to Liverpool. But then some people are saying, nah, he's probably going to Chelsea. Um, yeah. So I do want to talk about that and talk about some recent reports, quotes on him, whatever. Just like, you know, keep you guys updated with what's going on in the Sancho world. Before we do get into all that exciting and intriguing gear, I want to remind you there watching to please subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet already done so. It's just a click away, man. Please do sub. Hit the bell notifications icon because that is important. If you want to help your bro out, why not like the video? God, for some reason I forgot how to say like the video there. Follow me on Instagram as well to keep up with all things Yan. All right then, let's get into it. Let's start with young, he's not young anymore, I don't know why I said young. Let's start with Chelsea superstar, influential midfielder, beast, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Long has the road been of his recovery. Is that even English? Long is the road of recovery. It's been a while, I, it's, he's been out injured. Although he's been training with the first team for a long time now, he hasn't really got any match minutes. We've seen him on the bench a couple of times, but he hasn't, hasn't featured because said games have been very difficult and it's probably been a bit too much to ask of him. Anyway, he played a full 90 minutes against Everton for the under 23 slash development squad. Chelsea won, one nil. He took a few batterings in that game, some nasty challenges, which is some sort of hairy moments considering he's been injured. But generally, he performed very well, did some superb link up, carried the ball incredibly well, you know, did his trademark Loftus Cheek run when players just seem to be bouncing off him and he's driving forward. The kind of stuff that you want to see in the Chelsea first team right now. He also won the penalty that saw Chelsea win 1 0. So, generally, finished 90 minutes, took some rough challenges, came out the other side clean. Dude's killing it, very, very positive for Chelsea Football Club, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Frank Lampard, and indeed, us the fans. So that's good. Another Chelsea-related story, uh, they're all Chelsea-related stories, but currently Chelsea-related story is Armando Broja and Tino Andrian, both youth players, were not in this the squad team. They're not playing in the under-18s or the under-23s. They've been training with the first team. Now, Tino Andrian's awesome. I've spoken about him before. Obviously, I've been speaking a lot about Broja. He, I said to him, I said to him? I haven't said to him. I've never spoken to him. I said to you guys in a previous video, what if next season he could be training with the first team, acting as a third striker? Well, it looks like he's going to be in the squad uh, to play Liverpool tonight um, and the fact how he's just training with the first team is massive. Obviously Tino Andrian's already made his debut for the first team against Grimsby, came on looked very very good indeed. If there's a striker scoring goals, get him in, get him in, bring him with Tino, come on, come to the first team, score some goals, please, please. So that's positive, hopefully he trains well in front of the gaffer, Frank Lampard, impresses him, who knows. Maybe if he does make the bench, maybe even come on when we're 7-0 up against Liverpool with 30 minutes to go. Joking aside, it's just a really positive thing that he is training with the first team. They're obviously keeping a close eye on him. Uh, they see value in him and hopefully, like, like I've speculated before, we see more of him next season. Very good. Right, let's talk about Alex Tellers again quickly. Simon Phillips, Chelsea blogger, writer, reporter, posted on chelsea.news.co. Apparently, Porto are now ready to cash in on the Brazilian left back. This summer, he'll only have one year left on his contract. He keeps refusing to extend and sign a new one, even though he's such a big, important, influential player for them. He knows at the age of 27, going on 28, this is his last chance to get a big, juicy contract at a competitive club that can win things. He sees potentially a club in the Premier League like Chelsea being a suitable candidate. As things stand, Tellez's bio clause is £33 million, which in itself is, looks like a very reasonable fee, all things considered in terms of his ability and performance levels. But it's speculated that £20 million should do it in terms of making the transfer happen in the summer. 
20 million pounds for a goal scoring, assisting and good defensive left back seems like a snip, especially in his prime. Obviously there's always some elements of risk bringing in a player like this, certainly from the Portuguese league. Um, you know, Bruno Fernandes has been great so far, but there is risk, you know, at his age as well. But at 20 million pounds, it seems like a really, really smart buy of this. If Chelsea do get Tellers for 20 million, Hakim Ziyech for 33 million, you know, just over 50 million, you've got two high class players in two problem positions, you're looking pretty darn good. So I'm not saying there's not any other potential suitors for Tellers, I'm just saying Chelsea probably do fit the bill, they'll give him decent peas, which you'll be very interested in, I'm sure. And you know, they'll be like, dude, you'll be a starting left back for Chelsea, West London, lovely scenes, you earn loads of money, we might win stuff, attacking football, come on. I mean, who else is gonna buy him? Um, you know, a Man City is still in for a left back. Is he even a left back, Man City style left back? I don't even know. Don't know much anymore. So yeah, tell us, superb. Right, Jaden Sancho, boy wonder, one of the most desired players around world football, arguably the most in terms of availability. You could say Timo Werner, but I'd put Sancho above him. And I'm only saying most desired because it does look like Mbappe only will go to one place if he does leave PSG. So you're looking at Sancho. Sancho's relationship with Dortmund dipped a little bit when he felt a little bit hard done by from them a few months back. But he seemed to redevelop, be redeveloping his relationship with Dortmund. And according to German publication Bild, the relationship is blossoming again, which is a nice thing to see. Obviously that's good to help them see out the rest of a good season possibly, but there is speculation massively that he's still going to go in the summer. But maybe if a deal can't be struck and the price can't be met, which I think is highly unlikely at this point, he could stay at Dortmund because the relationship is good again. All right, so recently people around Manchester United are coming out saying he's going to Man United, man. A couple of journalists have come out apparently close to the player going, yes, he's going to Manchester United. But I'm starting to think this is like just media noise to sort of unsettle the player. I think he's come out recently, Jaden, and said, look, I don't listen to anything on the outside. To be honest, that's just a media savvy response. But you know, you've got some people reporting and saying, yep, Manchester United are the favorites. Manchester United are the favorites. Bookies have put them as the favorites. But then similar journalists around the club have come out and said, no, he's going to Liverpool. <laughs> But why did that leave Chelsea? Chelsea were the bookies' favourites to sign Jadon Sancho, but it does look like it's these three clubs. Something that I've always maintained here on Football Therapy is that he'll go to United, Chelsea or Liverpool. I've always said that. If you watch my videos, you'll know I've always said that. And that's just me using my brain and speculating. But if Man United do not get Champions League football, that'll be very difficult for them to secure the player, no? Sure, they can still get top four, maybe top five, if that does indeed qualify for Champions League next season. And of course, they could probably win the Europa League, although I might put people like Wolves in front of them in terms of being favourites. With Liverpool, it's an interesting one because, of course, they are the best team in the land. And maybe this will buy them because one of their players is going out, like Salah, or Mane and they'd be like, well, easily a superb replacement, probably an upgrade with Jaden Sancho. So if they can get in his ear and be like, look mate, you will get into this front free Anfield because so-and-so is out the door, we'll give you loads of money, champions of Europe, Premier League champions, what you say in bruv, you know? It's probably a smart move. <laughs> we can romanticize all we want about him being a Chelsea fan and idolizing Frank Lampard and being mates with Tammy Abraham and Hudson Adoy, but that's like, you know, I, I want to go on holiday with him. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is his job. So he's got to make the most sort of professional decision. Do you know what I mean? Apparently, a figure's come out, which is interesting. 140 million euros, which is decent. Uh, I mean, like, people were assuming it'd be that 140 million pounds plus, maybe. So if that truly is the price tag, then... Fair enough, I know people will still see it as a risk because he's a teenager and he's had like two good seasons, um, but he does look very, very talented. So he's probably worth the money at this point. And this is the price tag probably before the Euros. Remember, if he has a really good Europe, um, European Championship campaign, that price could skyrocket. But at this point, we don't even know if the Euros is going on at the moment. So we'll have to see what's happening there. Probably he'll look at the clubs and be like, darn, what's happening here? Like I said, if he gets promised he'll get into the Liverpool front three, great. 
But Chelsea have signed Hakim Ziyech, they have got his mate Jadon Sancho, and they have got Pulisic. So already he's looking at the club and seeing three new acquisitions. Well, Hudson Adoy is not a new acquisition, but three players new to the first team that will all want those winger spots. Whereas he'll look at Manchester United and be like, they've just absolutely got a massive glaring hole at right wing. And I'm a right winger. He's like, I'm the mass, I'm the piece of the jigsaw that fits into Manchester United. You dig? So in terms of playing and getting paid, Manchester United might be like, yeah, we'll give you 300k a week, mate. Don't worry about it. And you play every single game. And you know, the old Trafford faithful singing your name and whatever. He might fancy that. Go to Liverpool get paid good money too. Uh, maybe not as much as Manchester United will pay him, but he'll get paid good money, play in an absolutely elite team. Chelsea, boyhood dream. What's happening? What's happening? I don't know. Anyway, I'm keen to get your thoughts and opinions on all the stuff I've spoken about. Andrin, Brozier, the Chelsea youth coming into the first team. You feeling good about that? Ruben off the cheek playing 90. Superb scenes. Alex Tellez for maybe 20 million pounds. Even better. And Jaden Sancho going to Manchester United. <laughs> Get down in the comment section below, let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything I've spoken about today. That would be cool. If you've enjoyed the content, why not like the video, help your brother out, um, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, follow me on social media at Football Yannick, or Instagram and Twitter. Alright, I'm out. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.